We got a lot of lake effect snow for the Great Lakes, but also still a lot of snow for the Eastern Rockies from Colorado to New Mexico and a lot of rain for Southeast Texas to Louisiana. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pew. It's December 3rd, 2025. So again, for the Great Lakes, especially if you live in places like Northern Michigan, the Eastern part of Lake Michigan and the Eastern part of the other Great Lakes, you guys are gonna see some lake effect snow up to one to three inches. But if you live in the very Northern tip of Michigan, you may see up to six inches. And why this is all happening is because large bodies of water heat and cool a lot slower than land. And because the water is still relatively warm, compared to its environment, it's providing a lot of lift. And so if we look at 850 millibars or 5,000 feet above the surface, we have this low pressure system that's somewhere around the Ontario, Quebec area, and it's slowly still traveling to the east. But because of that, we're still having a lot of counterclockwise flow. And so places like Northern Michigan, we're having a lot of northerly flow and all the Great Lakes, we're having a lot of northwesterly flow. Now looking at the broad spectrum of things at 500 millibars or midway to troposphere, we have this really strong low pressure system that's somewhere around the four corners area. And this is one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot of upward motion in this area and producing a lot of snow because of the vorticity maximum somewhere sitting around the four corners area and slowly traveling to the southeast we're having a lot of positive vorticity advection in places like colorado new mexico essentially meaning that it's getting more spin and more increase in upward motion and then not to mention going back to canada we do have a pretty broad trough somewhere around the manitoba area and this is going to be significant because if we go down to the surface adjacent to that is going to be a high pressure somewhere around the plains and just like how we talked about in yesterday's video this high pressure is going to be significant for the upward motions in colorado new mexico because of that kind a clockwise flow it's bringing in a lot of easterly winds into the eastern rockies and with the incline of the higher elevations providing a lot of orographic lift or winds going upwards with the mountain forcing the air to go up and then not to mention if we look at the bulk shear from zero to six kilometers we're gonna have a lot of shear especially in the eastern rockies but throughout the country overall and that's going to help tilt those updrafts and really enhance that upward motion so with that being said all this is actually going to connect with a lot of rain that we're going to see in the southeast texan region and louisiana so with that high pressure that we just talked about in the plains it is slowly traveling to the southeast but it's actually very broad and it's still bringing a lot of northerly wind all the way down to the gulf and because of that northerly flow it's bringing a lot of cooler air into this region and looking at the surface we also are going to have another high pressure somewhere around the southeast region and then following that clockwise motion in the gulf it's going to be bringing some easterly winds and then eventually some southerly winds into texas and louisiana and so with these two high pressures they're going to intersect and we're going to have some surface convergence or basically winds at the surface colliding and because we have the ground and we have the sea they have to go up and that's going to do two things for us one we're going to have a localized low pressure and that's going to help with the surface lift but two because of these winds colliding we're going to have a lot of cold air and warm air interacting with each other constantly providing a stationary front and so for southeast texas and louisiana you may see some isolated showers around like 3 to 4 p.m central time but most of the heavy rainfall is going to occur tonight around like 9 p.m central time and it's going to occur pretty much all night into tomorrow if this cold air from the north pushes deep enough a lot of the strong storms could be beyond the coastline but regardless the weather prediction center did issue a marginal risk from southeast texas to louisiana for flash flooding.